All right, everyone. Uh, welcome back to week four of Grasshopper. And uh, we're going to pick up where we left off and look at the other part of, uh, and this is going to be a really short video, uh, but we're going to look at the other part of elk, which is the topography. Um, if you look at the extra elk um, sort of uh, section, then uh, you'll see this one, which is called SRTM Topo, right? So let's just drag and drop that in really quick. And then I'm going to go back to the website. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see some description about SRTM um, Topo component. Um, it uses the SRTM data, which uh, if you actually, let's see if there's, there's no, okay. So you can just like Google SRTM. Uh, shuttle radar topography mission by at the JPL, right? Which is this website. And um, what you can do is basically this is I guess NASA used their shuttle to uh, scan the world more or less um, as in a sort of image scan. And so the caveat is that like this isn't um, this isn't super uh, accurate. So you want to actually use this for you know building um, scale. Um, but it kind of gives you a sort of broad uh, idea about the topography and in a sort of really broad range. Okay, so what you want to do, uh, and I might save this link, is so go down to the very bottom where you see um, SRTM V2 released. Uh, data can be obtained through this URL, right? So if you click on it, it'll bring you to this uh, directory. As you can see, uh, you can kind of look at the what are these. PDF. Um, and uh, what we're going to click on is version 2. And in version 2, uh, these are basically different, uh, I guess, accuracies, right? So SRTM 1 is better than 3, is better than 30. So obviously, you want to go with SRTM 1. Um, so if you click on SRTM 1, uh, you'll see it's the data is sorted into a couple different regions, and so you'll want to take a look at the region definition JPEG first, and it gives you an idea. So uh, it's the United States basically sorted into a couple different regions, and all the data is in there. And so we're looking at region six, right, which is where uh, we want it to be, or um, Charleston, right? So it's on the eastern seaboard. So we'll click on region six. And you'll see that this is basically sorted by latitude and longitude. Okay, so um, if we go back to here, uh, you'll see that remember we had latitude and longitude, right? So latitude 32 degrees, roughly, right? You'll see like where that sort of map area you selected falls in, right? So this is roughly 30 degrees north, uh, 79, almost 80 degrees uh, west, right? So this is um, the negative means you know west of the uh, of the uh, prime meridian that passes through Greenwich in um, uh, the UK, right? England. So negative is west uh, to the left. So we're looking at 79 or 80. This is really close to 80 and 32 north. So if we Look at here, uh, we're looking for 32 north, 33, 32, okay, and then 30, 32 only, so you'll see here it goes up only up to 80, right, uh, so west 80, it doesn't go to 79, 79 probably is like in the sea or in the Atlantic Ocean already, okay, so you can click on this and save it, and um, if you click on the zip file, uh, all it is is this HGT file and with N32 West 80, right? So you just extract this to some place you know or you can find it. Now I've already downloaded this earlier, so I don't need it. Um, I can pull it up. So same thing, just like put it in a folder where you can find it, probably you know the same place where you put your OSM files. All right. So just unzip it, and you don't need the zip file afterwards. Okay. 
So the next thing we'll do, and your your uh, sort of area is going to be the different from mine, right? Obviously, because you know we don't drag and sort of cover the same box when you're uh, when you're kind of going through this export uh, sort of procedure, right? Okay. So uh, what we want to do is copy this. Control C, Control V. All right, and uh, in this path, instead of uh, set one file path, instead of the OSM file, this time we give it the HGT file, right? This is the one that we just. Okay, so if you look at this STOPO component, it looks for a path of the SRTM HGT file, latitude, and then longitude, right? Uh, just a word of caution, don't connect this first. Right, um, because these are zero to one open domains. Uh, this will basically bring in too much data, and so what you want to do is actually connect these in here first. Right, your latitude and longitude uh, from your location data first. And uh, note that this is confusing because these uh, inputs are actually flipped. Uh, the latitude is on the bottom here, but it's on the top there. Right, so latitude to latitude longitude to longitude. Make sure you kind of do that first, otherwise you'll probably freeze your computer. Uh, and I say that by experience. And then you can pull this in, and it'll think for a little while. And you'll see on your screen a lot of stuff. This is basically a lot of points, and these are the sort of image uh, data converted data points uh, that NASA kind of collected from the, let's say, space 3D scanning project, all right? So you'll see on the outputs, these are individual points, which are all these. Um, the latitudinal curves, which are all these curves. And then the surface that's created from the points. So if you want to like close this um, and you just kind of want to see the surface, then you can very easily go to params, geometry, uh, surface, and just push that one out and just hide this, right? So hide the preview and you'll get a surface. Now the one caveat, and actually we can actually look at this, uh, the one caveat is that for both of these you might actually have to check um, both your file units. I'm not sure that when you're bringing the topo in versus the location that the scale is always right. As you can see here, this is roughly right. This is probably the, the water, but it seems like you know uh, the city part of Charleston is a little. The scale is off. It should be. Seems like that shoreline should be over here, right? So, and um, I don't think, uh, or as far as I know, there's. I don't know if there's actually a way to kind of match these up perfectly. Um, I'm. I'm not sure. Um, but you know, if everyone knows better, then well, be sure to let us know. Right, because so this little thing should probably be there. Right? So you might have to do some shenanigans to kind of get things to match up. Uh, same thing. Um, the this topo is really uh, sort of small. Uh, let me actually. The topo is really relatively flat, right? So you, you're not you're not going to see a lot of um, sort of variation uh, because this is a fairly flat area. But you know, if it was like the Rocky Mountains, then you would probably see uh, a lot more variation. I'm just sort of baking this just to kind of get a sense of the surface, right? Yeah. So you know, I just sort of bake the surface. It's not very um, it's not very articulated uh, since we're on this sh on the coastline. Okay, but that's just you know sort of how you bring in, and you, you notice that the surface data is very dense, right? Because all of those points were data points that were used to kind of create the surface, right? Uh, so this is actually was really um, for most sort of purpose pretty pretty heavy. Okay. All right. Um, so that concludes uh, this video. That's how you bring in the um, SRTM data um, for topography. Uh, just, you know, caveat, uh, this isn't super accurate. It's probably good for broad purposes, not for anything um, really detailed. 
all right?